What is going on guys? Welcome to a new video. So you've seen the title then. Today I'm going to be giving you three niche ideas for 2019 and I'm also going to be showing you then the process and the kind of strategies and methods I'll go through to actually find these niches that have the potential. So I've been a big follower then of Ty Lopez for quite a few years now and I was watching one of his videos recently and he mentioned the famous saying, you've probably already heard it, of give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day or teach him how to fish then and he'll eat for a lifetime. So that's kind of what gave me the idea for this video. It's all well and good me showing you these niches and saying these are good ones, these have potential, but unless I actually teach you and show you how to find the niches yourself, then ultimately that's what's gonna benefit you in the long run and ultimately that's how you're gonna be successful. So that being said, that's the topic of the video. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoy it and let's get straight into it. What is going on then guys, welcome to my computer. So let's jump straight into this actually and what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna take you through how to choose a winning niche first because then when I show you the niche ideas at the end of the video, it's gonna give you a better idea of how I come to find them and why I've actually chosen them. So starting from the top then, how to choose a winning niche in 2019. Now the first thing I wanna draw your attention to is the actual definition of the word niche because I feel like it's kind of lost its meaning. Um, so I did a simple Google search and this is the actual definition then. So denoting or relating to products, services or interests that appeal to a small specialized section of the population. There's a few key words in there and it's small and specialized and it's section because I've been guilty of this, a lot of people are guilty of this. I've pretty much just choosing any topic and calling it a niche when it's just not the case. And to be successful, especially on Facebook, you have to appeal to a niche and choosing dogs, say, as an example, dogs in itself is not a small specialized section. It's such a huge, vast audience. You need to do what I call a sub-niche, which is actually choosing a niche within a niche. So if we take dogs for an example, then a good or a real niche then, or a sub-niche, whatever you choose to call it would be say pugs because it's a breed within the dog niche and people who own pugs who have pugs that's a small specialized section of the dog niche as a whole if that makes sense so that's the first thing I want to show you guys then because I want to try and adjust your thinking to what kind of interests and subjects that we're actually going to be thinking about and what ones are actually good ones because the smaller the more targeted you can go then the more likely you are to find somebody who's really passionate and interested in your product and then the next point I want to talk about just quickly is the marketing platform is relevant so depending on where you plan on selling your product then that's also going to affect how you pick your product or how you pick your niche so for example then people don't go on Facebook to do shopping to buy anything therefore you have to pick products that people are really passionate about to grab people's attention because people are there to be entertained so you, these products have to really appeal to someone whereas if you're trying to sell a product on Google then you can appeal or you can target people who are actually searching for specific products so therefore it's not about finding a product that somebody's really passionate about it's about putting the right product in front of the right audience if that makes sense now any questions on this at all because all the points in this video are really important so if you're not quite sure on any of this then feel free to ask as many questions um, as you like all the social media links are in the video description or simply leave, leave a comment down below and then the third and final just quickly is consider spikes in popularity so when it comes to choosing a niche or a specific product as well it still applies then consider the spikes in popularity i made this mistake when i first started the the product I chose, if you're not new to this channel, if you've been following for a while, you know it was LED dog collars. And I got into trouble in that first year because I never considered the fact that the popularity of that product would decline and then therefore sales would decline. So I quickly had to think of my feet and find other products then to bridge the gap or to bridge the lack of revenue that was coming in from this product. So just to show you guys then, this is the Google Trends search. And as we can see then, there's clearly four different spikes in the past five years. And these are all around kind of Christmas time or winter time then, where it's gonna be dark earlier on. So people will be finishing work and it's gonna be dark and therefore people there's a requirement and a need for this type of product. But as you can see, in kind of like the summer months where it doesn't really get dark till probably nine, 10 o'clock at night, then there's not so much as a need for this product. So if you do choose a niche or a product then where this is the case, then just be aware that you're gonna to have to have other products that are gonna sell well through summer um, to bridge that gap, to make sure your sales and your turnover stays consistent. 
So that being said, then back to the actual Google document. And based on those three points that I've just mentioned, then I'm changing the title of this video to how to choose a winning niche in 2019 for Facebook advertising. Because typically, I believe that the majority of people watching this video will be planning on using Facebook ads, or they may already be. So the first point to consider then when it comes to choosing a niche is it has to be something that people have a strong connection with. We're going to be advertising on a social platform. People are there to be entertained, to see what their friends are up to to let people know what they're up to so unless it's something people have a strong connection with then they're just going to ignore it so as it says there it's an extreme example but fridges it pr probably the chances that it doesn't matter how good your fridge is you probably won't do very well at selling it on facebook because it just people well probably not a lot of people have a strong connection with their fridge so therefore they're not going to give it their time of day they're not going to give it the attention and they're not going to talk about it with their friends and family as well which leads us on to point number two and this is really really important because the cost of facebook ads is increasing and therefore organic reach is key the more the better product that we choose and the stronger connection somebody has with it then the more likely they are to talk about it with their friends and family so to tag people or to share it on their page and the more we can get people to do that then that's going to drive our costs down because if for say for every thousand people that we pay to show our ad to we get an extra 10 percent on top of that then that's an extra 100 people that are going to see our ad that we're not having to pay for if that makes sense and the more we can do that then obviously the better chance we've got of reaching those people who want to buy our product and making those purchases so it's key then that we actually choose a niche that people want to talk about with their friends and family so the chances are then, again, I'm only speaking from my own personal opinion. If you think I'm wrong on this, then by all means, feel free to correct me. But people probably won't tell many people about a fridge that they've got or a new fridge that they've bought. But if they've just adopted a puppy or they've just got a new puppy, then the chances are they're going to be putting it all over Facebook. They're going to be sending pictures to their friends and family because it's just a strong topic. People have a really strong connection with their pets and they want to tell people and show people about their pets. And if you can get people to do that about your product, then you're going to be onto a winner. So moving on to number three, which kind of links in about what I've just spoken about, which is something that triggers an emotion in your audience. So this kind of more comes into play with the actual ad copy itself. If we can come up with a picture or a video that triggers that ad actual emotion in our audience when they see it then they're more likely to actually stop on our ad and see what it's all about so i've used this example quite a lot because it's so powerful if you're trying to sell a dog product then the easiest way to market it is to get a cute dog wearing your product and show it playing around in the garden because everybody likes to see dogs like playing and being happy as well as humans as well the best thing or the easiest way to market a product is to show somebody enjoying using your product because then it triggers that emotion in your audience it makes them want to have that same emotion it makes them want to be happy and therefore they want to buy your product and it also links back to point number two which is a topic people talk about with their friends and family in organic reach like one of the most popular things that goes around on facebook is memes and funny videos because people want to share it with their friends and make their friends laugh as well so if your product does that then they'll want to share it and make their friends feel that same emotional feeling or that same emotional bond so the more you can do that with your ad and your product then the easier it's going to be to increase your organic reach your cpm is going to be cheaper your cost per purchase is going to be cheaper and all around you're just going to be onto a winner Moving on to the fourth and final point then is something people spend a lot of time doing or already spend a lot of money on. So a classic example, a good example of this then would be say cycling. And the reason cycling then is such a good example for this is because you can spend as much on a car as you can on a good road bike. And people who spend that sort of money on a road bike, then they're heavily invested in that interest. And the chances are they're gonna be spending a lot of time if they've spent a lot of money on it then they're going to be spending a lot of time doing it and therefore they're going to be more open to spending more money on certain accessories that are going to benefit them um, within that interest. So for example, you could sell things like uh, certain bike lights or certain bike bottles or bike attachments, whatever it is, there's just endless opportunities you can do here. The more 
time that somebody spends on a certain hobby, for example, then the more passionate they are about it, the more likely they are to talk about it with their friends. The chances are they do it with friends as well. And if they're already spending money within that topic, then the chances are they're gonna be interested in actually buying your product as well. And then to wrap this section of the video up then, before I actually go into the niche examples, I've just got some topics to kind of help you guys think about. Now, ultimately, I always recommend choosing a niche that you yourself uh, do one of these things in because the better understanding you have of the market then the easier it is going to be to pick a product that you know somebody will be interested in so for example then I play golf um, if I see a golf product I've never seen before I'll know straight away whether that's a product that other people interested in golf will will enjoy and be willing to spend their money on so some topics to think about then, uh, certain sports. So again, try and think of sub niches within this. So rather than sports as a whole, pick a certain sport or perhaps a certain age range within a sport. Pets, again, think of certain dog breeds or cat breeds. Then family and friends, think of certain maybe charm bracelets or what family and friends do together. Socializing, what do people do to socialize together? Do they play a certain sport or... Um, where do they go out or what do they spend their money on for example um, and then travel wise again what sort of travel maybe focus on a particular type of travel method like flying on a plane what kind of plane accessories travel accessories will people enjoy and then hobbies as well so ultimately what people spend their time doing so it could be archery snowboarding whatever it is so that means then that wraps up part one of the video if you're still watching then thank you very much i really do appreciate the support on the channel and if i've taught you something new or you found something valuable with this video or even if I've given you an idea for a certain niche, then please do hit that like button as well. So that being said, then let's move on to the actual niche ideas for this video. So the first niche then I want to show you guys is the animal jewelry niche for a few reasons, really. Number one, um, it's just going to be consistent all the way throughout the year. And to find a niche that's going to be consistent no matter what is always a good thing, because as I mentioned earlier, you don't have to worry about those sales dropping off. Another thing as well is that you can have a jewelry niche store and you can like create menus for different animals. So you could have an L1. I've been in the L1 myself. I know it works really well. I know the elephant does as well. And I know the unicorn one does as well. The unicorn one especially is absolutely huge. So there's just in terms of scope, then animal jewelry is absolutely huge. So definitely one I recommend going into for 2019. And then in terms of marketing, it's dead easy. It kind of presents itself. You can target certain interests on Facebook relatable to unicorns, to elephants, to owls. Um, again, another reason why I really like this niche, cats, elephants, uh, elephants, turtles, um, just because in terms of targeting on Facebook, it's really, really easy to do. So I'm going to kind of go through these pretty quickly just because the the main kind of bulk of this video was to kind of show you guys how to find those niches and what kind of things to look for this is purely then just to kind of give you ideas and motivation so another thing i like to do as well is always check it off against google trends um, just purely because it will give you an idea then of whether it is trending whether it drops off at certain points and when the popular and kind of spikes in popularity are as well so as you can see it's been pretty consistent for the past five years so i see no reason why this won't continue into 2019 and 2020 then 2021 um, you can see the spikes I'm assuming are kind of around Christmas time because they're like it's the perfect gift idea and then it also tells you the interest by region which is huge as you can see the majority of the interest comes from the United States so straight away it tells you where your market is where your customers are and then another huge really powerful thing is it gives you related queries so again it tells you what popular queries similar to animal jewelry that's already being searched so as you can see fox jewelry now i've never actually seen that before never even considered it before so definitely something worth actually considering doing some research into um, i can't imagine there's a lot of people in that niche so moving on to number two and not funny mugs but kind of like personalized things pretty much print on demand i think is going to be absolutely huge in 2019 because people love this sort of stuff it's funny it makes the perfect kind of gift and present idea and when it comes to drop shipping as well then shipping times aren't an issue if you use and go through print on demand supplier 
then you can get your items, your orders to your customers within a week. So again, it eliminates the biggest obstacle when it comes to the, tradi the traditional sense of drop shipping, which is the shipping times. When it comes to finding designs as well, it's dead simple to do. I'm not gonna go into too much detail now because I've covered it in past videos, um, but the best ones are literally just texts that say funny things and they're not trademarkable either. So you can just find one um, that's selling really well for somebody else and pretty much just copy the exact same thing. If you watch my video last week on how to find winning products, then I showed you a store that did over 3 million in revenue on print on demand um, clothing, which was literally like a father, son or father, daughter combination. Um, and all it said was funny sayings on, and they did over 3 million in revenue. It was all proven everything. It was a store that was for sale actually. So, in terms of things and products like that, um, I believe uh, there's always going to be potential there, especially into 2019, and it's probably just going to get even more popular. In terms of marketing on Facebook, then it's really easy to do because you can just create a design yourself and you can center it around certain niches. So, for example, like this one um, is obviously advertised at people who don't like cats and people who don't like mornings or people as well. So, that's number two, moving into the third and final one, which is absolutely huge and that is cosmetic accessories. So the reason I like this one as a niche is just because in terms of scope and scale and different kind of avenues you can go down on Facebook, there's just so many that the potential is absolutely huge. What's good about this as well is that the fact that you can go down Facebook with this and you can do Instagram. Obviously with Facebook, you can target lots of different brands. Now what I'm specifically talking about here is accessories. So as you can see, different bags and things, not actual makeup, just accessories to go with it. Because when it comes to the actual makeup then brand is very important within that niche within the market whereas accessories like this then branding isn't so important so when it comes to Facebook then you can target lots of different makeup brands and then obviously on Instagram you can target influencers who do makeup tutorials you can send them a product get them to to show your product, show themselves using your product um, and things like that are really powerful and really, really huge. So number three then is cosmetic accessories. And that being said then guys, that pretty much wraps up the video. Um, if you're still watching then thank you very much, I really do appreciate it. Please drop the video a like if you enjoyed it. And that being said then, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you all in the next one.